Hi, I'm Forrest, Forrest Gump. And I'm Todd Miner. Okay, a recap on video two was, what causes the ailments of thyroid issues, how the virus works. We also talk about ways to prevent the uh, virus from uh, gaining full control of you. And, and we also talked about the different stages that you go through and the uh, triggers that causes the Epstein-Barr virus to actually break down your system. This video, which is video three, we're gonna talk about alternative healing options. We're also gonna talk about original healing options. What do we leave out in video two? Uh, one of the things I wanted to cover in video two to be left out, some of the diseases that you're, you are suffering from, well, these are degenerative diseases, meaning that you weren't born with them, but you've acquired them over time through the diet and lifestyle and being exposed to the uh, Epstein-Barr virus, EBV, that you, didn't, that, that you now can attribute the root cause is the virus. First up, is probably um, polycystic ovarian syndrome. That's caused by the EBV virus. It's just the ovaries. It's going to cause. It's going to be one of the reasons that's causing this. Would that be something similar to fibroid tumors? Fibroid tumors is caused through toxicity and uh, also with the iodine deficiency. So, but there's that, that's a that's something separate. Believe it or not, breast cancer. Uh, most cancers are caused from one having a being toxic and second having a virus. Usually the Epstein-Barr virus or some other virus is caused. The combination of those two is going to was, was triggers the body to have cancer cells. Now there are other there are other factors involved that we'll go back go into that in more detail in one of our cancer video. Gene mutation. That's one of the tests they give you and you you will if you have the Epstein Barr virus, you will have gene mutation. And when you deal with the when you lower your viral load of the Epstein Barr virus, the gene mutation will stop. Basically when you change your physical body, the, the Epstein Barr virus begin to decease its rampantness in the system. Then we want to talk about like uh, injuries that won't heal. That's associated with the Epstein-Barr virus. Fibromyalgia, um, eczema, um, and psoriasis, chronic fatigue syndrome. These are all situations that will cause that are caused by the Epstein-Barr virus. These are diseases that you are dealing with, but it's actually the root cause of it is the Epstein-Barr virus. Now, lupus is autoimmune disease. Now, I'm going I'm to say something about this. Auto, there's no such thing as an autoimmune disease. The body would never attack itself. What you mean, ain't no such They've been told that they have autoimmune disease. Right. So you're saying that they don't have autoimmune disease? No such thing as an autoimmune disease. That's, that's a misunderstanding because the body, because the medical community does not understand what's actually going on in the body. Self-preservation is the first law of nature. So the body would never attack itself because it identifies itself. Now, the only time the body will attack itself is when you like do a, have a donor situation if you donate a kidney or something like that, and the body doesn't recognize that itself. So it will attack the that it views its form. But it would never attack itself when, it, when, it's, when it's identifying itself. What's, what's happening with the autoimmune diseases is that the Epstein-Barr virus has burrowed into a organ, your liver, your kidneys, your nerves, and your, your immune system is trying to attack it. So when doctors are looking at the symptom or looking at the body's reaction, they're not looking at the root cause, which is that there's an undiagnosed virus that the, that the body's immune system is trying to, to attack. So if it looks like it's attacking yourself, it's not attacking itself, it's trying to get at the virus that's inside the, 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 uh, the gland or the organ that you see that the body's hitting. So when you see someone who has multiple sclerosis, um, they have nerve issues like that, that's because there's an Epstein-Barr virus that's been, that's, that's been rampant for decades and now it's causing problems with the nervous system. Let, let me say this since you said that. I want to kind of elaborate a little bit on that. You said since the Epstein-Barr virus go, goes unnoticed, it burrows into an organ. Once it burrows into that organ, the body follows the body's protection mechanism, or army, it, the body's army, goes into that same burrow that that virus burrowed and it tries to attack that virus. In so doing, it makes it look like the body is actually attacking itself, right. but it's following that virus. Right, so, but because the medical community has not, has not diagnosed the disease, that the virus, it has not, it's not realizing it's there, they're assuming based on all evidence that they're looking at that the body's attacking itself. And it's not, it's actually attacking the virus. And you, you, and you believe people go buy that? They don't have to buy it. What they can do is go get tested for the Epstein-Barr virus that the, doctor, that the doctor missed. And when they, when they find out that they do have the Epstein-Barr virus, then they'll come back to this video and say, oh, okay, well, he did know something. Okay. <laughs> but I didn't know I had this Epstein-Barr virus that I caught, you know, decades ago and it was never addressed. Okay. All right. So, lupus, that's another, that's another uh, 
disease that's caused, that the root cause is the Epstein-Barr virus. Now, a lot of people got lupus now. Yeah, and a lot of times people you get diagnosed with Lyme disease. That's usually, most times it's a misdiagnosis. It's actually the Epstein-Barr virus, but they're misdiagnosed as Lyme disease. Um, you'll see rheumatoid arthritis. That's an autoimmune disease, again, that's affecting your joints. And that's again that the, the virus has burrowed into your joints and your body's own immune system and attacking its joints, causing inflammation. There's sarcoidosis, there's connective tissue disorders, there's uh, like uh, diabetes and hypoglycemia, there's acid reflux. What's happening with acid reflux is your, your um, hydrochloric acid is low. So the good acid in your body is low. And the bad acid that's in your body is hot because the because the liver is not functioning properly, the bile is not being put out put out adequately. You have an imbalance of the hypercar of acids in your body. Now, what's going on here is when you're sleeping, not only is the, the acid reflux splashing up and burning your esophagus, but right. the gas from your your, your uh, acid is actually there's an ammonia gas that's coming up that's actually uh, saturating the thyroid gland and causing the thyroid gland to be compromised and preventing it from healing properly. So that's what's going on with acid reflux. And then there's a uh, Celex disease, there's hepatitis C, there's Cushing syndrome. There's, so there's a lot of diseases that are associated, that are not, that are not being associated with the Epstein-Barr virus that are, if you go to the root cause, you'll find out that, well, if you go get tested and you find out you have the Epstein-Barr virus, then you'll know that these things are being caused by the virus. So basically, People need to get tested for this Epstein-Barr virus because if I'm listening, you're naming every disease under the sun. Well, not every disease, but there's a, there's a certain type of disease that the Epstein-Barr virus is causing, but it's a wide range of things that it's causing. And the problem is, is that it's never been, it's never been, it's nobody's looking for it. And so when you're trying to heal your disease, you're actually trying to manage a symptom that has nothing to do with the root cause. That's what the problem is, you know. So, for example, if you have, let's say you have eye strain, the root cause of your eye strain is dehydration. Right. You're, trying, you're constantly taking aspirin. That's not going to solve the problem. It may eliminate the symptoms, you don't feel it, but the eye strain is always going to come back because you're still dehydrated. See, so that's what we're saying here. You've got to get to the root cause of why you're having these diseases. You can solve it. So the medical community is if they're quick to say they don't know what the the cause of some of these diseases. How did you catch loop? How did this stuff happen to you? They always say, well, we don't know. At Herbs of the Forest, we know. And that's why we're telling you. Okay, well, let's find out now. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and find out the options, alternative healing options. What does that mean? You listen to most people, they say alternative healing is herbs. That's alternative health. For this conversation, alternative healing means what is Western allopathic medicine response to the Epstein-Barr virus or the autoimmune disease that you're getting diagnosed with. Medication? Medication. The medication that they're offering for, let's say, for an autoimmune disease is what's called an immune suppressant drug. So they're trying to suppress your immune response to solve your problem. And it sounds like, in, in theory, it sounds great. <clears throat> but when you know what the root cause is, that your immune system is responding to a virus, if you suppress the immune system, the virus can run rampant, can now go from stage one to stage two to stage three to stage four, and now you've got multiple sclerosis. Now you, now you can't function, you gotta quit your job, you know, because you can't function, because you suppress the immune system that was holding the virus in check, because it was, because you thought or you were told that you had an autoimmune disease and you needed to, your body was attacking itself. And what you did was you turned off the defense and now the virus can go on offense. Okay, so basically what you're saying is the moment they take those antisuppressant med medications, they actually go against the body's defense into trying to rid itself of that virus. And when they shut down the body's defense system, the virus can run rampant and take you from stage one to stage 115. But prior to that, the body was fighting on your behalf until you went and got some medication to turn off your automatic life-saving system. Right. And now see, the reason people do that is because as the body is fighting the virus, it's causing pain because you know the, the virus is causing pain and, and the fact that the, the, the autoimmune response is trying to go in the, in the organ also and get it, it's causing pain. So now you have your pain 
is, is, is superseding your common sense. Well, no, I won't say that because you don't know that there's a virus there. But if you did know a virus was there and you went and got the drugs because the pain was too much for you, you're, you're, blocking, your, you're blocking your defense because the pain is too great. And so you, you never want to turn off. So that's the thing. They always want to suppress the immune system because they think the immune system is, is acting um, against the body. And it's not. So, so if you have an autoimmune disease, I don't care what it is, you want to go get tested for the Epstein Barr virus. That's, that's and, 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 and the, the thing that what makes that alternative is if the body is the original healer of itself and you give it something to turn the body off, that's alternative in nature. Well, well alternative means it's, it's secondary. And actually, medication is secondary. There was, there was always, first of all, the body, like you said, the body is its own doctor and own healing mechanism. But there's always been like plants and herbs to heal your body. That's the original healer. So anything after that is alternative. They've just switched it around and turned turn herbs and health and heal the natural stuff into alternative. And they've made pharmaceutical drugs be the predominant method that people try to manage their disease. So basically what he said, it, a, a play on words has taken over. And you either bought that play on words by thinking that herbs which are natural are now alternative instead of medication which is created by man is actually alternative if you bought that switch in terminology then you fell for the okie doke and believing that medication is the primary that's going to heal you when in essence medication is the secondary which is alternative which is going to actually stop your body from healing itself now it don't get no simpler than that you either buy the lie or you stop buying the lie nature was here first plants was here first man came after nature man came after plants so i'm not saying they're bad i'm just saying you have to decide for yourself what's alternative mean and what it don't mean nature in itself is original it is not an alternative method it was the first method. What we're going to do further, just to clarify, we're not anti-medication. What I'm saying is medication has a purpose. If you're in crisis, yes, you should be medication. If you break your leg and you step on a landmine in war, I'm not going to offer to take this, take some milk this. You need some drugs to deal with that. But that's battlefield medication. The problem is people are applying battlefield medication when nobody's in, in, on the battlefield. So you can always, the goal is to be preventative in nature. First of all, you want to do things to prevent yourself from ever having these disease and having these health challenges. But if you do get them, you want to catch it early. And I'm not really one to, you know, you want to catch it early so you want to see you can heal it. That's the best. Oh, see, I don't think you should catch nothing. Um, prevention is better than remedy and cure. You don't need to catch nothing. As a matter of fact, you need to let some of that shit you got go. Because that's what's killing you. What you done already caught. Let some of that stuff go. That's all we trying to say. Okay, I am not him, but me. You know what I'm saying? He don't mind you catching. I don't want you to catch nothing that you don't want to keep for yourself for the rest of your life. You see how passionate he is about doing nothing? Yeah, I'm passionate because I know you are suffering unnecessarily. I know. I feel your pain through this computer screen, through that camera. Oh, yeah, I feel your pain because I talk to people every day, and all this suffering is unnecessary. Who do you believe in? Who do you trust? You trust the guy that's trying to kill you or the guy that's trying to save you? I ain't saying that's what your doctor's trying to do, but oh my God, if he don't know a, a sodium-based pill and opposed to a fluorine-based pill, if he don't know that he's giving you a fluorine-based pill and you taking it and it's killing you, which, how am I supposed to feel when you come to me and I say, oh yeah, this is fluorine. Fluorine shuts down 72 different pathways of your iodine in your body, which you what you need most, which works with your thyroid, your second brain. How am I supposed to feel? Oh, okay, my bad. I'm supposed to let y'all, okay, just go ahead and suffer. No, that's not me. I'm sorry. What can we offer these people herbally? Since we know herbs are the natural healing solutions on this planet with the least side effects and the best results. Which ain't got nothing to do with me or you. Yeah, but if you have a thyroid issue or you have autoimmune or any of these diseases that are degenerative diseases, one of the things you want to do first, vitamin B complex source. Now, when I say that, I'm not saying that you need to go out and get the pharmaceutical vitamin B. You need to get a plant source of vitamin B. So you're going to need to go get some things that, I, that have the uh, spirulina, uh, the blue green algae, uh, stuff like that. And um, you want to get zinc, but you're going to need to get a plant based, based source of zinc. Now, when you go to our website, we have the zinc formula. It's going to be, it's going to have pumpkin seeds like that. So you're going to see 
that type of zinc. You're not gonna see zinc sulfate. You're not gonna see an in, inorganic zinc formula. You're gonna see a plant-based zinc formula because the body is organic. So you need to be taking organic things. So if you need iron, how many people are gonna go make some uh, some railroad tracks to get iron? <laughs> It's, that's not just the wrong form of iron. So when you're getting iron ferrosis, those that's the wrong, that's an inorganic source of iron, and it's the wrong source. So you'd have to get a iron source that's plant-based. So the, what happens is plants are uniquely capable of converting inorganic minerals in the soil to an organic form that you can use. So if you're taking an iron supplement, and what used to have to make people take iron supplements, well, women take iron supplements because they have heavy minerals. And that means the anemia. So they get, they get tested at lower iron and they go get iron ferrosis, which ends up doing, what that ends up doing is drying up your intestines and causes you cramping. So like that. So you're taking this up and you don't want to take it anymore because it's causing pain. Because the reason it's causing pain is because you're taking the wrong source. See, if you look at our iron supplement, it's going to have plant based. It's going to be yellow dot blue, burdock blue, dandelion blue. These are all herbs that are known to be high in organic iron. When you take this, an inorganic source of a vitamin or mineral, uh, and I used to do this too, I'm not saying this, I, I'm not beating anybody up, I'm just letting you know that I, I, I too was not always health conscious. But you, you'll notice that you'll see your urine will be bright yellow, you know, smell like vitamins. That's a, that's a trigger that you know that your body didn't absorb it, it just wasted it out. So you have some expensive urine. See, when I used to see that, I was like, oh man, this, I'm, I'm taking these super vitamins. I'm looking at my urine, it's yellow, it's bright, yeah, I can smell the vitamin, I'm healthy. No, your body wasted all that. I think the thing that they didn't hear most was minerals and nutrients are the key to healing the body. I did not say medication, mm -hmm. I did not say anything alternative. Plants are of the earth just as you are. We both came from the earth. We did and plants did. So the elements that make us what we are comes from the earth. Plants are the only thing that can actually transform those elements so that we can actually reuse those elements to heal. It's alchemy. I'm an alchemist. So let me give you some other things. So you want to get a plant source of vitamin C. We have a plant source of vitamin C in our website. Um, you want to get a plant source of zinc. Um, now some of the herbs that you can use, I'm going to give you some individual herbs. If you're trying to heal from these type of diseases. Um, spirulina is really good. Spirulina or chlorella. Now, personally, I like chlorella. Um, especially if you're a melanated person, I think chlorella is a little better. But either one of those is fine. You, you're going to get a good source of iodine. You can't go wrong. You're going to get a good source of iodine if you're using any type of seaweed or sea ocean plant, whether it's bladder rat, kelp, blue green algae. Corella, spirulina, these are all herbs that are going to be helpful for your, your, your thyroid gland and your, your human from any type of autoimmune disease or any type of disease that's caused by the Epstein Barr virus. Now, also, you want to get some things like uh, cat's claw. That's another good herb that you're going to use. Um, it's known to be able to destroy viruses. Um, another herb that I would recommend is um, licorice root. Now, licorice root is good for actually for iron for one, but it's also good for the liver, the spleen, and the um, sort of reproductive system. So if you have a compromised liver because you have uh, toxicity in the liver based on you having the Epstein Barr virus, licorice root will help you with that. It's also good for lungs too. Um, lemon balm is good. Um, I would say. Um, um, one of the herbs that is very popular now is chaga mushroom. That's very good for um, for dealing with these type of diseases. I know one of my favorites is red marine algae. Um, it's a little hard to find, but if you find some red marine algae, it's great for inactivating viruses. It um, will actually help you get rid of viruses. Um, nettle leaf, I'll say magnesium, is some other minerals that you want. Selenium is actually very good. So these are the type of things that you want to, that you want to make sure that are in your diet. Um, chromium. Um, what's the other one? Vitamin D, good. See, another one would be um, curcuma. Curcuma. That's actually um, the components that's in. Uh, what's the herb that that's in? Turmeric. Turmeric. Yeah. So that's another herb that you want to get. Turmeric. You can get the curcuma. There's a lot of things you can do to help your health. So these are all things that you can do now for Now for us, we try to make it simple for you. You can go on our website. You can, he's showing you right now the immune support formula. So that would be a good formula. Um, 
Whatever. Lord, we want to use like either the iodine or the thyroid formula. And the iodine formula, I believe, has the bladder rack in it. And this one would be. Yeah, it does. So that one would be better for hyperactive, um, hyperactive or overactive thyroid. Whereas the thyroid formula is better for underactive thyroid. So we definitely got the bladder rack in the thyroid, the iodine formula. So, and you know what? I need to do a better job of explaining that on the website because that's, that's the main difference between the two. But it's a little bit different as far as the ingredients, but you shouldn't see any uh, bladder rack in the thyroid formula. But um, I know that, um, so that's basically what you want to do. So you want to, you want to use, you want to use the original healing method. You've got to, when you incarnate in the physical realm, you were someplace before you were here, when you incarnate in the physical realm, you have to learn how to listen to your body. And your body is constantly telling you what's wrong. With you. That's why you have a thyroid gland, because your thyroid gland is actually, like you talked said earlier, it's your second brain. It categorizes. It catalogs homostasis, which you're supposed to, how everything's supposed to be functioning. It's constantly trying to rebalance that. We're we'll going to cover some other things that we can talk about later in the last when we wrap this up about even if the thyroid is gone, it's still functioning. Even if your thyroid is taking out, your body is still acting as if it's there. You should not give up doing right by your body because if the Epstein bar virus is in your body and you don't have a thyroid, it doesn't mean that your body has forgotten that you don't have a thyroid. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of supporting evidence to support what your body does when your thyroid is gone and how it still sees your thyroid, even though it's gone. Now, I know that sounds weird, but again, there's things that you don't know about your body and how intelligent it is. This is why we believe that people need to revert back to nature and opposed to anything else because nowhere on this planet are you going to hear that even though your thyroid is going, your body still recognizes it. Even, and your body is still functioning as if it's there. And even if a little piece of your thyroid is still there, it's still working harder than it was when, when the rest of your thyroid was taken, before it was actually taken out. So it doesn't matter that it's gone. Your body is so intelligent. And until you learn these things, you know, you're, you're going to have those doubts. But when you got herbalists who care and do the research and don't mind sharing it with you guys, you are going to learn things that you just don't know exist. I mean, there's a lot of stuff we're not telling you about your thyroid and how it actually works, whether it's there or not. We're holding back. We're not telling you everything. But that's okay. Just stay tuned. Um, one of the things I do, I call it the butterfly sun soap. And what that means is your, 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 your thyroid gland is a butterfly-shaped gland. And what you need to do is, if, when, if you're capable of doing this, you're, if the sun is available, you need to you know, lay out someplace and lay on your back and let the sun hit your thyroid gland. Because actually the, that, the, the butterfly wings on the, on the thyroid gland act as solar panels. And it, it acts, the sun, the solar energy will actually charge it and actually charges your immune system, which is really important considering we got Situations going on with you know the like virus right now. People are really worried about getting sick. And, you know, you need, to, you need to really make sure your immune system is up to par. And so one way you can do that is with the butterflies, sun soap. Now, so he just took y'all on a little journey. I know some of y'all ain't gonna get it, but uh, keep listening, and we'll keep explaining and exposing and sharing. And a lot of this is gonna come around, come back around to you because you still get to talk to us. So stay tuned to the next video. I'm Forrest Gump. I'm Todd Lyman, and this is Herbs to the Forest.